It's not just a card. It's a way of life. It's access to a world of more. It's not just for dreamers. It's for achievers. Introducing the new UBA Platinum MasterCard, a premium card for those who want more out of life. The UBA Platinum MasterCard offers you an amazing array of perks such as up to 15% off your Avis car rental, exclusive benefits at top hotels, airlines and destinations. Visit a UBA branch near you and request your UBA Platinum MasterCard. UBA, Africa's global bank. Yeah, so good morning to our uh, lovely audience and thanks for joining our first business series for 2022. It's, I'm super excited to be here this morning and thanks for joining us. We hope and trusting that we're going to have a, a wonderful engagement today. Our topic is exciting. If you can see from my uh, background, okay, this way rather, uh, sustaining your business as an SME. Wow, what a wonderful topic. I mean, Businesses, as we start them, have would have some challenges, would face some difficulties, we would have um, various issues. Um, I'm excited about the topic we had with um, um, one of our uh, resource persons and time ago that talks about funding for your business. Benjamin Kofi-Kwanson, uh, then on um, securing funding for your business. Today, we're looking at how to sustain the business that we've started. Uh, we have a um, a good resource person today is an expert in um, growing businesses and um, uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, help me and let's welcome our facilitator for today um, and a resource person who's going to share with us a call a call good to see you good to have you here this morning Echo, you're muted. I can I can see you are talking to us, but you're muted. If you can unmute your microphone. Hi, um, good morning. How are you all? Yes, good to see you. Good to have you. Yes. How is it okay. going? How is it going? Um, everything is okay. Everything is okay. It's good to be here. It's it's good to be thank here. You, good to thank be on you this very platform. much for accepting our invitation to join us for this business series. Um, seeing from your profile, rather very long. I had to. Yes, I had to actually cut the the, the introduction short so that because uh, there, there are many more things I, I didn't say there. But it's good to have you, and we're trusting that we're going to learn from you today. And so, of course, going to give us a presentation, and then we'll come to ask questions. Please, if you have any questions, please drop them in, in the chat session. We'll pick up your questions as the course is going on. We'd like to have them to flow, and then we'll bring your questions to him uh, at the appropriate uh, time in, in the presentation. So, Echo. Thanks for joining us and then you, you have to. Okay, good morning. My name is Eko Mensa. I am the CEO of the African Network of Entrepreneurs and also one of the few certified productivity coaches by International Coaching Federation in Ghana. Um, I do this for a living, helping businesses to start up, to be properly managed and also to scale up. And I'm very excited to be here on this uh, UBA series. UBA is definitely a bank that I've admired for a long time, especially for their impact across Africa in growing, you know, entrepreneurs and supporting them financially. And it's honestly a privilege to be here. Uh, today, we are looking at sustaining your business as an SME. And if you would permit me, I'm going to share my uh, slides so that we can go through it. And then after we can have the interactive session where we can answer questions that you may have. <clears throat> Sorry. So sustaining your business as an SME, um, UBA business series. I'm going to go through it quickly. First of all, let's look at what business is. And I'm sure you already know what business is, right? It's the thing you do for money. But I am going to throw a bit more light um, on an angle that we probably haven't thought about. Or maybe we already know, but we haven't necessarily examined. And that's what my entire presentation is going to be based on. So understanding business, business is the exchange of currencies, one divine and the other man-made. Okay. And it's not a church, so don't, don't be confused, but business is the process by which time, which is a divine currency is exchanged for money, man-made currency through the provision of customer centric solutions. Okay. Um, basically 
business is nothing but the use of the 24 hours that we've been given every day and then exchanging it for the money that we are looking for because the money that we are looking for is the man-made currency and then the time is the one that god has given everybody has the same amount of time 24 hours in a day and whatever service or product you are providing is meeting a particular need or is um, solving a particular problem for a customer and in doing that over time you tend to be paid a value for what you are providing and then in being paid the profit on that now helps you to get your business to be sustainable so that's why for a lot of people that come to me and then they want to start a business and they say they don't have money i tell them that honestly it is not the money that you don't have which is the problem it is what you're using your time for and what value you are getting out of it who you are serving within that time so when you look at businesses that have done well, they found a way of serving a lot of customers in the shortest possible time. I.e., when you look at Facebook, for instance, Facebook has over 2 billion subscribers to the platform. And through that, you're getting a lot more money from, you know, advertising, because if you have 2 billion on your platform, definitely you'll be one of the top five or top 10 richest people in the world. So they've been able to build a platform that is providing value in the shortest possible time. And in getting back their man-made value, which is money, they become a successful company. So two things that we are going to look at, which is time and whatever business or product or service you're looking for. Now, when we go to time, it is indeed your biggest asset. And a lot of the time we talk about time management, but time is not something you can control. You only manage something you can control. So I am of the opinion that there is nothing like time management. There is only activity management because when you write out your to-do list, there are activities that you have decided to either do or not do. And eventually at the end of the day, the time will definitely keep going. Time never stops for anyone. And that's why the moment your time is up or when your business's time is up, the business has collapsed. When your time is up, you have died. So there are three things that time, you know, is, 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 is known for, which is one, whether you are investing it, which is creating value, you are using it, which is attaining specific results, or you are wasting it, which is there's no value or there's no results. Time is really your greatest asset, which is the 24 hours that we have every day. The moment you get up in the morning, your focus should be, am I going to invest my time, which is, you know, creating value that consistently keeps giving. Because if you invest in UBA, for instance, they are definitely going to give you interest rates, interest. So when you put a certain amount of money, you get interest over time. Now, when you invest your time, you're going to get a value back that is going to enhance your business's profitability. Now, when you use your time in business, you are attaining specific results that you have, you know, written out as part of your KPIs to attain. But when you waste it, that's when you get to a point where your business actually collapses because you've not been able to account for the use or the investment of time. So today we are going to look at sustaining your business on these three parameters. Are you investing time, creating value? Are you using time, attaining specific results? Or are you just wasting your time and the time of everybody else? So now let's go to the first one, which is investing time. If you really want to sustain your business, the biggest, biggest focus is how do I invest my time every day? And the first thing is be a continuous learner as an entrepreneur or a business manager and also focus on building a learning SME. This is one of the reasons why I am personally excited about this UBA business series because it's a platform to learn, to unlearn and to be able to do better and be better as a person. Listen, everything rises and falls on leadership when it comes to business. And the, the size of your business is the size of your capacity as an individual, an entrepreneur or a business leader. Wherever your business has gotten to, that's really the capacity that you have. And that's the truth. So if your business is not growing, it means that you as a person, you are not growing, you're not learning. You're not finding out what is the reason why we are not growing. What is it that we don't know? What is it that we have missed? What is it that we don't have a skill set for which our business is struggling at this point? So first point when it comes to investing time is be a continuous learner. Build a learning organization or business. 
you and your business cannot benefit from what you don't know or what you don't learn from. If you don't know something, if you don't know what UBA is doing to help businesses, if you don't know what the government is doing to help businesses, if you don't know what foreign partners are doing to help businesses, if you don't know anything about your clients, if you don't know where the world is going, if you don't know the implications of uh, interest rates rising high, petrol going up and all that, how do you even know how to mitigate risk that these situations pose to you or how to maximize the opportunities that these things give you? Okay, Albert Einstein once said, commit yourself to lifelong learning. The most valuable asset you will ever have is your mind and what you put into it. The most valuable asset you will ever have is your mind and what you put into it. So at this point, I will ask you, what do you know? What do you not know? What are you missing? What does your business know? What does your business not know? What is your business missing? Okay, let's go to point two, invest in time, building and learning SME. To decide what training you or your employees need to do for your business, ask yourself these questions. What are we trying to achieve for our business? What is our vision? Where are you going? How would you know when you've gotten there? Make sure that you are learning how to craft a strategic vision for your business and consistently working towards the attainment of the vision. This is very important. If you don't know, find a training, find a program that would help you to make sure that you have an acute vision for your business. All right. What are the gaps in knowledge or skills that are holding our business back? What tasks can we effectively do ourselves instead of outsourcing if we have the skills? What are we interested in or inspired to learn more about and what can we apply to improve our businesses? What are our current challenges and how have others overcome them? What mistakes have we made in the past and what lessons can we learn from them? What type of organization do we want to be and how do we get there? If you take note of these lessons and you take it one at a time, not just by yourself, but with your team, ask yourself these questions, seek them out for those that you know and those that you don't know, find out what you can do to be able to learn this. Most often you've learned that you've heard that successful people are readers. And sometimes we dismiss this because some of us don't like reading. But I always tell people that if you don't like reading, it is not an excuse not to learn. If you don't like reading, you can watch. If you don't like watching, you can listen. If you don't like listening, you can be part of the experiments to build capacity and experience. There are so many different ways of learning. So then if you don't like one, it doesn't mean that you cannot use the others to also learn. Never make excuse for not continuously learning, especially now that the world is changing at such a fast pace where strategies are not even working anymore because we, we can't even predict what is going to happen today or tomorrow. You have to be a continuous learner. Okay, so these are some of the questions to help you. Now, point two in investing time, build a structured SME. A lot of the time we start businesses because we are inspired or we are motivated or we are unemployed or we've seen an opportunity. So we want to maximize it and make profit, you know, so we just start the business and the business is almost always around us or one person. When the person is sick, the business is sick. When the person has traveled, the business has traveled. Even when they have entrepreneurs, I mean, even when they have employees working with them, the business is so revolving around them such that in their absence, nothing happens. Now, if you want to sustain your business, make sure you are focusing on investing time to structure your business. It takes time, willingness, effort, and resources to build systems and structures for your business but you reap the following benefits when it is done right. Faster decision-making. There's no time to waste. Remember, time is your greatest asset as a business. It's not even about the money or the product because those things can easily change. But time you cannot get back. Yesterday is gone and it will never come back. Whatever you got as value from yesterday is what is going to you're going to use to build on today. So if you missed out on yesterday, it's likely that you're probably going to miss out on today too. If you build the structures, it's going to help you to make faster decisions, to be consistent and predictable. Businesses that are doing well, they are predictable. 
you 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 can you can guarantee that UPA will still open their doors today wherever you go. That is predictability. It builds trust and confidence in your brand. But if you're not predictable today, you are this, tomorrow you are that, you lose trust and confidence and eventually you lose income and your business is likely to collapse. You can't sustain the business. Improved operating efficiency. It reduces cost when you know what to do when. Greater employee performance. There are some of you who you have employees and you don't even like track their performance. You don't know whether they are doing well or they are not doing well. They come to work, they go to the house and you, you have no way of measuring. But if you build a system that measures the performance of your employees, you're going to get the value and the business is going to benefit. Building structures for your business also eliminates duplication of work where two people are not doing the same thing. Okay. It reduces employee conflict. Internal wranglings will be reduced. Better communication and understanding. This produces the results that you're looking for. It enhances productivity and profitability, and it improves the business processes. Trust me, one of the, the most beneficial things you can do for your business as an SME is working on building systems and structures for your business. Now let's look at how some of these things work. Now, how do you work in your business? Now, when you look at the first, um, the first picture, you see that we have strategy, you have corporate governance, you have processes, you have people, you have a culture and you have performance. This is actually um, a structure from Philips, the Philips company. All right. How is your business governed? What are the specific roles of authority and accountability in your business? Do you have a board? Do you have clear management structure? Do you have a clear reporting cycle? When people have concerns, where do they go? What is the strategy for the next three to five years? What are we going to do in the next 10 years? What kind of business are we going to be? How would people know what kind of business we do? I mean, we are and what we do. All these things are part of your strategy and your governance, your leadership system, your reporting cycle, your accountability system. Now your processes, when you are not at work for a month, will the business run? Does everybody in your business know what to do at every given time? Are things properly documented? Can these things be replicated? These are things that you need to learn because you see, you cannot always be running your business as an individual. Your business needs to be running itself with the processes and structures that you put in place. The fourth thing is your people. Listen, people are not liabilities. People are not your headache. If you're not getting the results from your people, it is not their fault. It is you because maybe you got the recruitment wrong. Maybe you're not training them right. Maybe they don't understand what the vision of the business is. Maybe they don't even know where you're going because every time you're bringing something new, are your people motivated enough to get the results that is expected of them? What kind of culture exists in your business? Do people know what to do at every given time? Do people know the ramifications of not doing what they are supposed to do at every given time? If they are supposed to report to work at eight and they don't get to work at eight, what is the consequence of that? Because sometimes you just say it, but there's no consequence to it. There's no punishment to it. So then they don't take you seriously because you say, hey, get to work at eight. Nobody gets to work at eight and you don't do anything to anybody. So there isn't a culture of accountability and the value of time in your business. Time is the most important asset in your business. Don't forget that. And now we are talking about how do you invest time so that it gives you dividends and interest, all right? And the next one is performance. Are you focused on performance? Do you hold people accountable? Do you hold yourself accountable? All right. When we come to business processes management, you realize that there are several factors to it as well. The first one is standardized workflow. It's in line with the processes that you put in place. Delivery smart services, service integration, so maybe you'll be doing different, different service offerings, but how do you integrate them? How are your processes simplified? Please, it is not true that the more complicated you are, 
the 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 more successful you become it's not it's not true the more simple you are the higher the probability of succeeding as a business it should be so simple that everybody knows that step one to step two to step three to step four is clear there's no complications i know who to talk to when i have an issue i know who to talk to when a customer has an issue i know where to go clear reporting lines Simplify your operation so that even a child can understand. Most importantly, make sure you are lowering cost in all this. Improve quality consistently because you've heard before, quality sells itself at the path and autonomy. You've heard it before. Make sure the products and services you are putting out there, they are of quality. They will sell themselves through referrals. And of course, enhance productivity. I cannot overemphasize this. Okay, now let's look at building a customer-centric SME. Whether you like it or not, we are in business to serve customers. We are in business because of customers. And that's why there's a phrase, customers are always right. You and I know that they may not necessarily be always right in that context, but because we need their money continuously, not one time, we have to listen to them and build our organization to be focused and centered on them and their needs. And these are habits that will guide your organization to be a customer centric organization or a business. First one is continuously listen to your customers. Con continuously follow up with your customers on their feedback. After a customer has given you, a customer gives you feedback because they like you and they want you to succeed. If a customer does not give you a feedback and they go, there's a probability that they wouldn't come back to your business and they are going to tell almost 10 different people of how terrible the experience was. So when a customer gives you feedback, please take it seriously. Don't let feedback just be a feedback box that you don't even check. Three, acting proactively to anticipate needs before they think you have thoughts. Okay, Amazon says that customers will want three main things, lower cost and a speedy delivery and quality. And that is what guides them in everything that they do. How do we make it cheaper for our customers? How do we not compromise on quality? And how do we deliver the fastest throughout the world? And it's no surprise that Amazon is actually one of the most valuable companies in the world because they are guided by three principles. How do we make it cheaper? How do we make it faster? How do we ma maintain or improve quality? What are those things that guide your customer centricity? Four, building customer empathy into your processes and policies. Do you love your customers or you just see them as instruments to be used for your own profitability? Do you love your customers? Can you say of a truth that you love your customers? Are you passionate about solving their needs and meeting them at the point of need? Are you passionate about their growth? Are you passionate about solving their problems? Respect customer privacy. Don't go talking to people about customers. You don't know who they know. The world is a very small, small place. Sharing knowledge internally with your customers motivating employees to stay engaged with your customers. Listen, you could be a very nice boss. You could be a very nice entrepreneur. But if you don't consistently ensure that your entrepreneur, your employees are equally nice and equally engaged with your customers, you probably will lose customers because of the attitude of your employees. Eight, acting systematically to improve the customer experience. Acting systematically to improve the customer experience. Nine, creating accountability for customer experience improvement. In fact, for some of your business, if you want to sustain it, make sure you are giving rewards for employees and team members that are going above and beyond to make customers happy. Within reasonable time. Within reasonable time. And I always tell everybody, every, every business that I consult for or train that categorize your customers into three main categories. You have the, your top tier, your middle tier, and your lower tier. And find innovative ways of keeping all of them engaged so that they don't feel sidelined or, you know, whatever, and you don't lose them. 
in every business that is doing well, you know, they customize, they, they categorize their, their customers in three main tiers, the top tier, the middle tier, and then the lower tier. And it's all about the value that they get from the customers and the value that they give them. Maybe in another setting, I'm going to help you understand these tiers and how to build systems that attend to their needs equitably. Okay. And remember I said equitably, not equally, because all customers are not the same. Investing time. Another thing is improving liquidity and enhancing profitability. Five ways to improve liquidity. Control overhead expenses, especially now that things are very unpredictable. Please cut costs. Yesterday I had a visit from uh, two entrepreneurs and they are looking for an office space. So they came to ask me if it was a good idea or not. I asked them, what business do you do? And it's a service software based company. And for some time, Uh, yes, I can, I can hear you. Hello? Hello Echo. Yes, Echo, I can hear you. Hello, Echo. So um, yes, um, I think technology is not is not being friendly to us uh, this morning. Of course, let's drop. We'll, we'll get a call back to join us in a, a, a jiffy, and then we'll get the the presentation continued. Um, interesting thoughts of course, sharing the um, time, uh, investing in time, uh, not wasting uh, money, and ensuring that your business will grow. He spoke about the. Uh, training and bringing association uh, planning in the team. You don't travel with your business. When you are not there, nothing happens for the business. Um, there's not no effective planning and sustaining the business. He spoke about, I mentioned investing in time, and then he spoke about the Amazon principle. I mean, amazing stuff. And I was going to ask a call whether um, how businesses in a part of the world can take advantage of the Amazon principle to also grow their businesses. Go up lowering costs for the customer, um, ensuring high quality supplies and improving on delivery timelines. So, um, Echo, if you can hear me, uh, hello? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So if you can hear me, please pick it up and let's, let's continue. I, I, uh, did you hear me talking about the liquidity and profitability? Is that where I ended? Oh, yes, yeah, so that's where you got to. Yes. So okay. uh, you can okay. take it up. Okay, thank you so much. I'm not sure what's happening because I didn't have backups, but so let's quickly run through it. We are still talking about investing time and I was saying that in, improve your liquidity. That is your ability to meet your liabilities, your short term liabilities with your current assets. Okay, and I was talking about two people coming to see me, two entrepreneurs and whether or not they needed an office space because they've been working from home during the COVID and now that the restrictions are, you know, uh, taking off, they want to get back you know, into an office space and I advise them that, listen, you don't have to, if you've successfully done it for almost a year, why would you want to incur cost? Because you feel that, okay, now the COVID restrictions have come down, so we need to come together. No, you successfully did this almost a year. So you can continue and maybe use the, 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 um, co-working space, you know, because there are lots of co-working spaces meeting rooms and all that. So if you have to meet your clients, you engage a co-working space and then you can meet them. There's, we, we are running one at um, East Legon called Emilax. There are so many other ones all over the place. So that would enable them to reduce their overhead expenses. 
That is one way of improving your liquidity. The, another one is sell unnecessary assets. Some of you have bought cars, you have buildings and things you are not using. Just sell them off. Okay, so that because remember, cash is king. In, and I'm sure you read it before. In business, cash is king. See, you can have all these assets, all these non-current assets, but converting it to cash when you need it most. It's honestly one of the most difficult times. In my consulting with Premium Bank, I consulted with Premium Bank for two years um, as an SME um, development consultant. And one of the things I realized was, listen, with a bank, the fastest way of getting the attention is if you have some sort of a cash investment with them. Listen, I'm sure UBA would even give you a, a load in less than 24 hours as part of, your, as part of the business uh, capital uh, product that they have. If you have some investments in cash with them, because cash is key. They are not in the business of converting your non-current assets into cash for, you, for them to pay off your loans. So ensure that consistently you are letting go of some unnecessary assets when you are not cash trapped yet. So you can have cash. Change your payment cycle. Talk to your vendors about opportunities for discounts if you pay early. Or on the flip side, you can consider offering your customers discount for submitting payments ahead of schedule as well. Look into a line of credit and on this one, I'll tell you that work with UBA because they have a product called liquidity management services. When you build a relationship with them, they know your business, you know their business, you know the services they offer you, you would you are in a better position to actually benefit from your engagement with the bank more than you would have if you were working on your own. And the last one is that revisit your debt obligations. If you have any current liabilities or short term loans, see if you can, you know, uh, like get get them to switch to maybe a long-term loan or debt so that you can take time to service this and then it doesn't put too much pressure on you let's move on quickly now we had four main things that you needed to do when it comes to investing time and then that one we are talking about value driven activities things that you have to take time be willing put in resources to do over time and when they are properly done they give you benefits that will ensure that your business is continuously sustainable. Now, we are going to using time. And one of the main factors when it comes to using time is producing expected results. Listen, business is about numbers. Business is about numbers. And I'll keep emphasizing this throughout my presentation. It's not about words. It's not about explanation. It's not about excuses. It's not about the economy. It's not about anything. Business is about numbers. It's about results. And when you set specific KPIs, that's key performance indicators, make sure that everybody in your organization is well aware of what is expected of them. Okay? Business is nothing but numbers. It's about results. If you want to make sure your organization is sustainable, if you want to make sure your organization is continuously growing, get rid of excuses. Get rid of, of all those plenty English and focus on the numbers. How many uh, uh, customers do we have? How much revenue are we making? What is our profitability? How many customers have we lost? How many have we gained? What is our following? What is our prospect list? All these things are specific things that you can quantify in numbers. Don't forget, business is only the conversion of time into money. So everything that you do, you should be able to put a time and an amount or a value to. Otherwise, you're not in business. So set specific KPIs and let every member of your organization be well aware, even your drivers and cleaners. Let them be aware of what is expected of them. Now, when these KPIs are set, make sure there are specific targets to them. Don't tell your sales uh, manager that, hey, we want to uh, get more customers this year. No. Tell them exactly the number of customers you need and you'll be able to determine what you will be required to get those number of customers. Now, make sure you're identifying waste and eliminating them as much as possible. Please be very conscious of saving money and reducing expenses. Okay? Targets achieved and then target measured. What gets measured gets done. What gets measured gets done. 
if you tell your people hey i want you to do this and you never find out if they are doing it or not they get used to you not measuring their performance and then you will see that performance starts coming down listen every company that is doing well out there they don't joke with measuring performance and targets okay so that's part of results using time they've come to work for eight hours what are you expecting them to achieve at the end of eight hours have they achieved it if they didn't achieve it what can you do to help them achieve it so that tomorrow when they are using the eight hours of your time they'll be able to give you the results you're looking for don't see business is all about the use of time everybody in your organization should be accountable for how they use your time because that's what you're actually paying them for the use of your company time before they even get to resources, okay? All right, now, using time, be accountable for performance. Accountability eliminates time and effort spent on distracting activities and other unproductive behavior. And these are some measures that I will, I will, I will, I will take you through quickly. Clearly explain expectations and goals. Provide proper resources, train as needed. Inculcate accountability in your organizational culture. Emphasize accountability in performance reviews. Develop a timeline that everybody is aware of, not just you. Empower employees continuously with the motivation, with incentives, with training, with mentorship, with coaching, with consulting, everything they need. Hold yourself accountable. Don't be a hypocrite. You are asking them, hey, I need this from you. They are also expecting things from you. So hold yourself accountable. All right. Now, losing focus. So we spoke about investing time. We've spoken about using time and now we are going to wasting time. And I'm rushing through a little because we don't have time. <laughs> okay. So lack of direction, not lack of time is the problem. Why? We all have 24 hours in a day. Can you imagine UBA has 24 hours? Your business has 24 hours. My business has 24 hours. <laughs> How is it that UBA is making this? revenue and you are making that revenue and i'm making this revenue there's a reason and sometimes we are wasting time because one we've lost focus and how do we know when we've lost focus we are not clear about our overall vision for the business so we are swayed to the left and right in everything that is happening we we, we just want to be part of it we have not set smart goals and we are not staying committed and accountable to those goals. And I'm sure you know what smart goals are. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and timely goals. And then we are panicking in every situation. Today you heard that, oh, the fuel has gone to 10 cities. Hey, you are panicking. This has gone up. Hey, you are panicking. When you panic, you deprive your mind of strategically thinking about solution. Please, when you're an entrepreneur, what you've decided to do is to find solution in every problem, not to panic, not to throw your hands in the air, not to be complaining to everybody that cares to listen. Nobody forced you to go into business. Nobody forced you to be running the business you're running. Nobody even forced you to be working in the business you're working in. So instead of complaining and, and, and blaming everybody, please, Stop panicking and find solutions. That is what makes you an entrepreneur. What innovation are you introducing in these trouble, troubling times, in these challenging times? How are you cutting costs? How are you providing more value within the shortest possible time? How are you engaging your customers to find out what their challenges are and how you can innovate and evolve your products to suit them? Continuously stay committed to serving and delighting your customers. No matter what happens, one truth about business is that it is a customer that helps you to stay alive. Whether you like it or not, whether you like your customers or not, some people say, oh, I don't like people, they are too much. Then don't be in business. Please, you are in business because of human beings. And these human beings are people called customers. People that are patronized, people that are going to patronize, people that have the potential to patronize. So continuously stay committing to serving and delighting them. Trust me, any company that is so focused on delighting customers are consistently doing well, regardless of the situation in the economy. 
Learn to delegate effectively and build capacities of team members to be able to deliver. Do not easily be distracted and avoid multitasking as much as possible. Some of us think that we are like supermen and superwomen. Please, the moment you right now I'm doing a presentation on this UBA business series. If I decide that in the same time I'm going to review a document, my attention is divided. And I will not be, I will not be able to deliver 100% value to UBA as part of the opportunity they've given me. So now I cannot blame UBA for not bringing me back or not giving me other opportunities because I was distracted and I decided to multitask. And as a result, they didn't get the value from me. Multitasking is not always the best. Finish one thing before you move on to another. Do not spread yourself too thin. Learn to say no to yourself and to others. Please, the business you are building is part of your legacy. And that's why for everybody that we admire, the first thing we, we know about them is what they built. We talk about Dan Gote is because of his business. We talk about Oprah Winfrey is because of his business. We talk about Tolin Lumelu is because of UPA and the impact of UPA across Africa. The business you are building is your legacy. So learn to say no to yourself and the distractions that you put yourself into and to others. And do not overly be optimistic. You know, we are very religious people. So instead of focusing on the numbers of your business and planning towards achieving specific targets, we are always saying that it's going to be well. It is well with our soul. God is in control. Oh, Jesus. Listen, one day I asked a question on my Facebook. What is the role of God in your business? You should see the answers people gave me. He's the CEO. Some people have employed God. Though. They've employed God in their businesses. God is their CEO. God is their chief operating officer. God is all sorts of titles for God. But trust me, one of the things that God has done for everybody is to give you 24 hours. If you are not able to convert this 24 hours into the value you want in cash, it is not his fault. Okay. Now, not building productive relationships. You waste time by not building productive relationship. You can, you can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people to be interested in you. Please, there's a reason why when you keep posting your business on your social media platform, nobody responds because nobody really cares until they need what you have to deliver. But it doesn't mean stop. But the question is, there's a reason why you are in business and it's to solve a need or to solve a problem. So find that problem, engage people on that problem and offer your business as a solution to them. Now let's look at a typical example. UBA is a bank. They don't need to be doing these things. These are value add things that they've chosen to do because by helping you build the capacity of you and your, your, your employees on how to run your business profitably, they also get their need met because you see, they are interested in your business doing well. Because the business they are into benefits most from you when your business is doing well. So even though they are in the business of banking and not capacity building, they've developed this UBA business series to help build your capacity. They are not just coming into your face and saying that, hey, we have this product, we have this product, you can do this, you can do that, we are better than this other bank, we are better. No, 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 no. Become interested in people and that is the foundation to building productive relationships. And these are the eight steps to it. Develop a continuous engagement strategy for your customers. Build and maintain a healthy professional relationship with your team members. Internal relationship building. When your people like you, they want to serve you. Please, please when everybody works with you because of salary, you've missed the mark. People should work with you because they love coming to the office. They love doing what they do with you. They love the atmosphere you create when you are around. And even when you are not around, it's part of the culture you built. Build and maintain a healthy professional relationship with your team members. Be genuinely concerned about your customers and meeting their needs. Develop an active networking strategy and implement it regularly. Build and maintain a relationship with your stakeholders, partners and suppliers. Build a healthy relationship with your financiers and bankers. And on this note, listen, don't go to the bank when you are desperate. You increase your risk of non-payments and defaults. 
go to the bank from the moment you decide to even go into business. Start your relationship with them. If you've registered your business, I'm advising you to open an account with any UBA branch today. Why? Because when you build a relationship with your bankers, they'll be able to help you build a credit worthy business to the point where when you need money, they'll be more than happy to give it to you. Please don't only look at going to financiers when you are desperate and especially in these times, start your relationship with them. Open an account, be consistent about running it, engage your relationship officer and let them help with your business's finances. I cannot overemphasize this. And let me conclude on this. Partner, you um, have an active work-life balance and a supporting social network. Running a business is not easy. So have around you people that you can depend on when you need them most. And finally, partner UBA and let them ensure your continuous growth of your business. And this is not because I am talking on their platform. I have been a consultant in a bank before. And there's a way of engaging a bank that profits you more than you know. And that's why even people in the market who don't have all those systems and structures I've spoken about earlier are able to access financing that blows your mind because they have a relationship with the bank. Start it today if you don't have it. And stop all this thing about, oh, bank is this, bank is that. No, you are misinformed. All right. And on that note, let me introduce you to the SME Working Capital Loan of UBA. It is for SMEs, it's for small businesses, and most importantly, it's for women-run businesses. And those of you who know Tano, you know we run Women Rising, and we are advocates of women economic empowerment. All right. On this product, they are offering you a working capital in the form of overdraft and short-term loan. This would help you um, uh, address your short-term liabilities or your current liabilities. All right. Now, the tenor is 12 months. Can you imagine? I mean, if, and it's structured to, in, with respect to your cash flow. That means as you are making, they are also helping you to be able to offset your debts. And then, of course, the target is SMEs. And the trading concerns are distributors, wholesalers, retailers, general merchants, supermarkets, and dealers of FMCGs, fast-moving consumer goods. So if you have any shop, if you have any products, if you have, this is the time to start engaging UBA. I told you, listen, it is a good investment of your time when you have the bankers on your side from the very beginning. Service sector players include legal practitioners, um, architectural firms, consulting firms, accounting and audit firms, IT, interior design, travel, like all sorts of businesses. All sorts of businesses, okay? <laughs> and let me conclude on this. You are in business because first, you believe you can do it. Two, if you're facing any challenges, it's probably because of a knowledge or experience you don't have. So learn it or find somebody who has that experience who can help you through it. And then three, believe in yourself, in your business and in the people that you have and continuously build their capacity to be able to deliver on the value that you're expecting. And when you continuously learn, continuously deliver value, continuously delight your customers, there's no way your business will not be sustained. All right. And on that note, I invite you for our Sunday business school. It's happening this 3rd April on Zoom. So those interested, please talk to UBA. I'm sure we'll have some partnership on this. And then you get more insights into the various things that I've, talk, I've spoken about. My organization is Tano and you can reach me with these contact details. So thank you very much for your attention. And I am looking forward to any questions that you may have. Over to you, Henry. Wow. 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 Amazing stuff. Amazing presentation there. Thank you very much, Kofo. That wonderful presentation and i mean i picked up a, a few things that um if you don't see me based on your presentations i'll be looking towards venturing into, into some business and seeing what we can do for ourselves because uh it appears that do. <laughs> there, there, there's a lot of information out there thank you very 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 much and then i, I, I put it so much to you you talk, spoke about sharing the dream not owning the thing all by ourselves, but sharing with the employees so they know and they understand the real targets and what we are going to. Mm -hmm. Won't my employees take my ideas and ways to go and grow their own businesses or do something, or 
even leave it to go and join my competitor and use my ideas to go their presence for them. Why should I share openly and not fear that I, w- I could lose propriety over my business strategies or information? Okay, so one, if you are ever afraid that somebody is going to take your business or your idea, first of all, it means that you don't think that your idea is phenomenal. All right. If you really believe that your idea is out of this world in a way that you have what it takes to implement, then even if they take it away, it's now going to be a case of Samsung and Apple. Both of them may be phones, but there's a difference. One is a lifestyle. One is a tool. Okay. So then imagine if somebody leaves Apple and says, I want to start my own phones or electronics or whatever. They then become Samsung. Yes, they will be competitors, but they will never be Apple. And that's one of the things that I tell entrepreneurs that listen, you may have, you know, all these employees around you and you'll be building their capacity, helping them and all those things, sharing your ideas and everything. You're afraid that when they leave, they are going to go away with what you have. But one thing is that imagine not training and building the capacity of employees. Your business is going to be there. Your business growth is going to be stifled because great companies are built by great people. Great companies are built mm. by great people. Mm. And that's why there's a need to continuously train your employees. If you are, if you are far above your employees in knowledge and skills, then that means that don't be surprised when you are the most stressed in your business. Don't be surprised. Because you know more than everybody. So you definitely be expected to do more than everybody. But the people that have built businesses that are great are people that can take a three months break and the business is doing well because they take time to build the capacities of their business. Listen, your idea is your idea. Somebody can babysit your idea, but they can never be you. All right. So that's the first thing. Two. I like that. Somebody can babysit your idea. idea. Oh, for some time. But when you show up, your child will come back to you. Trust me. Oh. When you show up, your child, then that's why you see, don't worry about what others do. That's why we even advise businesses that don't be too focused on competition. Competition is good. Analyzing your competitor is good. Doing a SWOT analysis of your weaknesses, strengths, opportunities, and threats is good. But listen, focusing on serving your customers delightfully is better. It's better because at the end of the day, trust me, if your business is serving the needs of people continuously in a very predictable and pleasurable way, there's no way your business is going to collapse. So yes, they can babysit your business. They can babysit your idea. They can, but it can never be yours. Okay. So that's what I have to share on it. So don't be afraid share with them because you need them. There's a quote that says that if you want to go fast, go alone but if you want to go far go with people and it's not just going with people but going with people that are equally great don't forget what i said great companies are built by great people and that's why uba is great because the people that work in uba are great i know daniel passionate guy so i'm not surprised that these things are happening okay so please don't think that when your people know too much it's to that disadvantage of you or your business. No, it's actually to your advantage. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. I, I mean, I, and I, I absolutely love that somebody can babysit your idea, but your idea, idea belongs to you. Powerful one. Now, Shadrach wants me to ask you, you said we should learn how to say no. And um, isn't that turning away business opportunities and things that will help you to grow your business? If you can shed a bit more light on 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 learning to say no okay so everybody that has succeeded in business is known for not more than one thing in fact when you look at all the successful people in the business you can actually their name is synonymous with one thing okay when we talk about tony elumelu is uba even though there's tony elumelu foundation and now it's all over the place but his legacy can never be separated from uba And that is banking. Okay. Now imagine if when he was building UBA, somebody came to him and say, Hey, Charlie, the real estate business is doing well. You have the money. Let's go into real estate. 
and then he takes the UBA capital and puts it in. And some of you know what happened with the banking sector crisis. They diversified their portfolio so much that they were not able to recoup the money that they invested. So imagine if he decided that, okay, um, yes, I've built UBA to a point, but let me go into real estate. Okay, tomorrow, let me go into transportation. The next day, let me go into this. Or a customer comes and says, hey, I want to do, listen, if you can't focus continuously on a vision and then say no to anything that is not in line with your vision, what you are doing is, is encouraging destruction that is going to take away your greatest asset, which is time. Opportunities, definitely, you may miss out on opportunity, but if you don't believe what you are doing, then don't even continue doing it at all. So stop that and focus on the new opportunity. When customers are coming to you, they are coming to you because of what you deliver. Now, when they propose other things that they would want you to do, it is only a suggestion. It is not for you to stop what you're doing and go and focus on setting them. Today, they say, come to this conference. The next day, go here. The next day, then you are just, because you see, you are exchanging your time. So every time you're not getting value, that, that builds your business. You are actually losing capital to your business. Okay, so that's why I'm saying, listen, it's okay to lose some clients because what you're looking for is customer loyalty. Okay, customer loyalty, not necessarily pleasing customers. There are two different things, please. <laughs> and maybe one day we'll talk about that. Customer loyalty is different from pleasing customers. Pleasing customers is being at their beck and call at the expense of your time. But customer loyalty is providing them the value that they require to meet their needs in a way that they appreciate for which they would want to come back or recommend you to somebody. If you can't provide something, but maybe because of your capacity or your, your, um, your assets, you may be able to do it, but a customer asks for it and it's not in line with your vision, politely say no without feeling any sort of remorse. And eventually, they may be upset from the beginning, but eventually they will respect you for the focus and dedication you put in your business. And the last thing I'll say is that not every person is your customer. Some people are just distractions. Some people are even your competitors. So they just come and test you and distract you. Focus and build. And one day, that your legacy will show forth and will be an inspiration to everybody else. So that's what I have to say to that question. Thank you. Nicole, I, I would like to find out whether, um, I mean, you spoke about Amazon principle and I, I love that um, absolutely, the three things you spoke about. How can we um, entrepreneurs in, in Ghana um, borrow or import or look at um, taking aspects of it into our business? Certain principles our, that we can use. Yes, that we can, that, that we can, that we can use for our businesses. Okay, so let's start with the three principles of time. Okay, three principles of time. It's either you are investing time, you are using time, or you are wasting time. Regardless of wherever you are, and specifically for Ghana, where we like to talk and we like people to hear our complaints and every time the business is not doing well, every time we want people to hear us out. But everything you do, the moment you wake up in the morning till you go back to bed, use these three principles. Have you invested your time in a way that tomorrow you don't need the same amount of time or assets or capital to get the value you are looking for? Because whenever you invest, the principal is there, but you have interest that adds on to the principal. So one of the ways to check whether you're investing your time is that whatever I'm doing with this time, is it building me the knowledge and experience so that the next time I don't have to do this over the same period that I'm doing it now? So if you are doing something for two hours today, are you learning how to be efficient with it so that next time you do it for 30 minutes? That is investment of time. So that's the first thing. Every time you evaluate the time you are dedicating to your business. If it's eight hours, how am I investing eight hours? Or if I'm breaking it because one hour out of those eight hours is your own break time as even an employee. So you take it. The yeah. company would not ask you to account for it. What did you go and eat? Where did you go? They don't care about that. But the seven hours, they expect value in return. So three principles. One, are you investing this time? 
Two, are you using it? What results can I confidently say that I've gotten from the use of my time today? What have I learned? Which customer? Because you see, you are in business because of customers. So if the day ends and you cannot tell, tell how many people you spoke with outside your organization, who you introduced your business to, or you introduced the value of your business, or you even asked about their business and how your business can help them, then you have completely wasted the time. Please, do you understand what I'm saying? These are the three principles. One, you are investing it in your processes and systems and your culture and everything so that you are efficient. Two, you are using it so that you get the result you expected, which is money. You are in business to make money. Now, money comes from customers. So then if you end the day and you haven't engaged with your customers, you haven't checked on your customers, you haven't followed up on some referrals and you just go to bed, you've wasted the day. And the third one is if you cannot account for the use of your time, you have completely wasted it. So for this seminar or for this webinar, I want us to, we can talk about different principles, but I want the takeaway from this to be these three things. Stop talking about time management. You and I know we write all these to-do lists and we don't do it. See by far, we have a lot of to-do lists. We can't, Shelly, we can't distract it. So you can only manage your activities, but you can't manage time, but you can invest it. What have you learned today? When you when you end your business today, ask yourself, what have I learned today? What skill have I mastered or developed today? Two, that is the investment. The second thing is, who did I speak with that can be a potential client? Which customer or customers did I check on today? How much money did we make today? That is the use. Three, ah, I don't know how the day went. You have wasted it. The moment you say that, hey, time go, eh, go eh, eh, you have wasted it because you are not conscious of the conversion of time into money. Please, that those are the three and I'm very passionate about this because sometimes we always complain, there's no money, there's no money. In your entire circle, you don't know anybody that can even give you thousand cities. And you are there looking for loan from UBA. Please stop deceiving yourself. Okay, <laughs> stop deceiving yourself. Please, what you need is how do you convert your 24 hours into anything that you're looking for? And sometimes you may have started the business, but maybe you have to stop and go and be an intern in UBA to learn how it's done. Or go and serve in a company that you admire and you want to build same. So that you invest that time there. And then when you come out, you are more productive and you get the result that you are looking for. So that's what I'll share with you. Three principles. Are you investing time? Are you using time to get the results you want? Or you are wasting time and you can't account for it? That's what I'll leave with you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Echo. And also soon our, our time is um, up and we'll have to be calling on this, but I'm sure we don't have to do a part two of this. Um, Echo, please consider uh, that let's see, um, create some time to do uh, part two of this has been wonderful having you uh, join us um, today. Thanks to my audience who's been who've been, who've been with us um, since the beginning. Echo, your very last words for us before we, we check out of this place. Okay, thank you so much for being here. Uh, what I'll say is that if you're in business, what you are saying is that you want to make money. If you are in an NGO or a charity, what you're saying is that you want to make impact. But even that, how sustainable the impact is depends on the funding that you've been able to secure. So whether it's NGO or it's for profit, the fundamental truth is that you are in this to make money. Let's not be overly nice about this truth. When you're not making money, you should be worried. The people that will give you money are your customers. So the three things you always have to do is be very frank with yourself about the value you deliver to these customers. Be very definite about the added benefits that your value provides these customers that delights them and want and make them want to come back and continuously hold yourself accountable for the results that you are expected to get, even if the business is yours. And that's why we advocate that even if you are the owner of the business, have the board so that you are accountable to someone. 
So that's my last word. Listen, we're in business to make money. Let's not be overly optimistic and religious about this. There's nothing wrong with wanting to make money. But there's everything wrong with wanting to make money in an illegal way. And that's why we are doing this series. You want to build money. You want to make money in a legal way. And as a result, there are things that you have to follow. But even if you forget everything, remember these three things. Your greatest asset is your time. Your greatest asset for your business is your customers. And your greatest asset for yourself is your continuous learning and the holding of yourself accountable for your productivity. And on that note, I'll say thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Um, I've been speaking to a commercial who is um, one of the 100 most influential young Africans, 50 most influential Ghanaians, Coca-Cola, uh, 60 young leaders in Ghana, uh, and have many, many things. The CEO of uh, Tano and uh, Women Rising Network, managing consultant, a certified business and life coach. Um, it's been good having you. It's been good having you. Now, this edition is going to be uploaded on our, our YouTube channel. So, for those of you who want to catch up or want to share with your um, friends and colleagues, you can actually come back onto the link and watch the episode. That will also be up, uh, uploaded to our YouTube page for more. And um, thanks for joining us. And do have a good day. God bless you. Thank you very much, guys.